Hi, welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. I'm your host, Mike Paddleford, and I recover loud. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life and recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove the people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people. People, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud, I recover loud, here to tell my own story, I recover proud, save a life of like 40, I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud, I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud, I recover, 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 I recover loud. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. Tonight I'm sitting here with my friend Katie Morin from Augusta. Uh, Katie, thanks for sharing your story tonight and um, for the work that you've been doing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from, what it was like for you growing up? I can, thank you for having me. Um, I am originally from Wilson Auburn and I grew up in the suburbs and um, I would say had a a fairly privileged upbringing um, and in my teenage years learning of family's addiction um, propelled me into struggling with making sense of the reality that that was. Um, when you say uh, you came from a privileged upbringing, oh. what do you mean by that? What do you consider privileged? I was able to go into schools with no problem. I was able to be clothed in in not necessarily what I wanted to wear. Um, definitely had no issue with those needs being met. Uh, basic needs, housing, food, um, natural supports. Um, so that's where I okay. I get at with that. Um, and and even though. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it was it was privileged. Someone in the family was struggling with substance use. Multiple people were, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and what was that like for you? How old were you and, and what did you see? So my family, um, it was large gatherings upon the holidays and so drinking, um, folks of the family smoked cigarettes, what have you. That's all I really remember growing up with. Then. Um, behind closed doors, I did have the privy of living with my grandparents. So my mom and I having um, struggles and needing to live with them, um, it became apparent that my parents and adult figures had struggles of their own that um, Nobody talked about recovery. Mm -hmm. um, there were no plans on doing anything different. Right. Um, so there was just a constant state of random chaos and a massive adjustment. And it sounds and it sounds like survival. You know, doing I, what they had to do to survive. Mm, all of us. Yeah. All of us. I'm an only child, so I very much, you know, if family was you know, doing as they needed to do, and I had time to myself, that's what it was. I was to myself. Gotcha. So there was... And you were in Lewiston, Auburn. At the right, time. in the suburbs. So there was nowhere really to go. Mm -hmm. And the neighborhood kids 
it was hard to have connection and relationships with them. So I was an outcast, not only with family, but in my neighborhood too. So mm. it wasn't hard for me to follow suit and find substances for relief. Yeah. And uh, what would you say was the first substance? What was your first experience with those? I think it was cigarettes. Yeah. Um, and then shortly thereafter, uh, friends, parents, um, they had access to their pots, so we'd be smoking out of the soda can. Yeah. You know, never got high though. I didn't realize I wasn't getting high. And I'll never forget the day I did, and I felt like I was in a fishbowl. And I was making a bologna sandwich at the counter, and my grandmother was home, and I just, I didn't say nothing. And I tried to act as cool, calm, and collective as I could. Yeah. So it wasn't hard to hide either. So there was experimentation that came. Um, in the home and outside of it, and why not? Everybody else is hiding their stuff, yeah. so let's right. let's let's play yeah. that. Yeah, it was effective. So um, as your your uh, use progressed, um, you know, what were some of the things you were doing? Um, there was a time where. Um, I think I, the substances weren't so much the issue, um, they certainly played a part. My, my biggest reality check came when I um, chose to be a runaway teenager, preteen. Um, I want to say that started anywhere from like 12, right up to uh, about 14 or so. and. and I was sent to a behavioral modification program out of state in a lockdown facility. Now, was it your family that sent you there? Was they absolutely signed the documentation for me to um, be in their custody. And um, how did that make you feel? I mean, did you hold that against your parents? I was so bitter, resentful, and and hateful. Um, also, you know, having to survive at the hands of strangers who on paper had legit guardianship of me, yet neglected the bananas out of us all. Yeah. Um, so there was my taste of basic needs not being met. There was my um, exposure to the most cruel and harsh punishment for a preteen um, young adult because you could absolutely be there until you were 18. And you said you ran away, um, but you also said that you felt like your needs were being met early on. So now you, you get sent to this place where you, I, I'm sure you imagined, it was going to be the normal um, you know, model of what it's supposed to be and yet you weren't even having your needs met. Not one bit. And nobody at home was doing anything different mm -hmm. to outgrow, unlearn right. their, their, mm -hmm. their crappy behaviors, right? So it was a very one-sided, I'm the problem. Right. And so there was an absolute solitude. I am that mm -hmm. lone being. And you know what, it is up to me to handle myself. And so um, there was some sort of a, a rebel that was, that seed was planted. My yeah. rebel seed was planted in those days, I think, and yeah. So how long were you part of that program? What age were you when you left there? I was in there for a year and three months, and it was about summertime. My birthday's in December, um, so I, I was 16 that year. I got out um, the summer before my 16th birthday. My mom had moved up to Mexico, Maine. Um, so I started trying to live up there and um, high school. Um, didn't last very long there. Um, I dropped out and did get my GED. And um, again, I think it was smoking cigarettes and pot with a friend. Um, and then the behaviors followed from there on. Um, and I was there until I was about 18. And then I got pregnant with my first child. Um, and that changed everything. Yeah. Uh, substance use absolutely was was um, happening before him, mm -hmm. um, and 
and yeah, during and after too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and that's something that you know. Um, I know it, it doesn't really matter what happens outside of us. Um, you know, if we start and we get into that cycle of addiction, I mean, people who use drugs are going to use drugs. And I mean, until we find a way to stop and work on ourselves and get better, uh, I mean, that's just a fact of this whole thing, right? Um, so, you know, accepting that is, um, you know, it's, it's really important for, for us in our, in our growth and healing. Because, you know, I didn't choose to neglect my kids the way I did. You know, the fact that we didn't have toilet paper in the house, the fact that we didn't have food in the fridge. Um, you know, my, my daughter, 14, 15 years old, you know, I didn't choose to neglect her. Um, you know, I just, I didn't have that choice, you know. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's hard to forgive ourselves for those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, and it comes a, a lot easier when we can get that, you know, um, forgiveness and acceptance from from them to see that, you know, they don't hold it against us. Um, you know, and I've reached out with my kids, um, and, you know, thankfully. And, you know, I think as the process goes and we continue to work on ourselves and get better, you know, all of these things come to us, you know, without, without trying specifically for that. And, you know, those are the gifts of, of my recovery and what keep me going, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, uh, how old is your oldest son now? He's 16. Yeah. And I'd love to touch on what you brought up when you shared that. I... Mm -hmm have some relief hearing you say that there can be reconnection and rebuilding Absolutely. upon because yeah. I'm not yet there. Um, yeah. My son and I are definitely um, strained in our relationship mm -hmm. and understandably so. Yeah. Um, and I very much continue to recover out loud because yeah. I am really interested in connecting with others. I am a parent in recovery and I am absolutely proud to um, to say that I I took a step and created something with dear friends that I uh, I am just um, I am very thankful to be in the place that I am to be able to say hey guys here we can do this together right. and please come and join me because I don't want to do this alone <laughs> yeah. um, and we've uh, <sighs> We've brought some light in places that have just been darkened for too long, and I am very, very grateful to be able to have these out loud conversations with people yeah. on all sides well, of parenting and recovery. Yeah, and no, I mean, it's like, I'm not going to get there, so I'm not going to bother. Um, in recovery, we can absolutely get wherever we want to be. Most definitely. Because we, we know that, you know, the work is within us, and we can keep working. Um, one thing I like to point out to people, too, is that recovery is not a destination. We don't get to recovery and then say, okay, what, what do I get? We keep working through recovery and things come to us. We Most get definitely. everything, you know? Um, so it's never mm -hmm. over. Um, the forgiveness of self. Yeah. The forgiveness of self has been the catalyst for me to mm -hmm. be able to be open to the abundance of those opportunities Absolutely. that give me the learning and the growth mm -hmm. to have my journey and to be able to live my life unrestricted, Absolutely. raw, and um, with love, because I, I am not okay living with the hate and the disparity. Welcome back to this episode of Recover Loud. I'm still here with Katie Morin. Um, so Katie, when you were um, in that place of, of using um, and you know the chaos and, and all of that, um, what did it take for you to decide to do something about it? 
Um, I would have to say learning peer support brought me to empowerment of choice. And once I learned more about my personal choice, I was better able to understand previous experiences that left me bitter and resentful. Mm -hmm. And so upon coming through some forgiveness of self, of others involved, um, I found myself able to propel into changing my way, creating my own universe. Um, and there were still some hardships that came along with those experiences. Mm -hmm. The learning of boundaries is one of the biggest and yeah. <laughs> challenging subjects. We could probably have a series on that alone, right? Um, and, yeah. <laughs> and we should. <laughs> um, I, I just, I recognize that that is an ever long process, um, the boundaries, and it's really something that I need to learn for myself because I've abandoned myself long enough. Yeah. I have two children that I really care to rebuild what I've damaged and to show them what's possible for them in yeah. what they go through because I know life will serve them so many hardships and yeah. there's going to be so many blessings to come from and I am beyond passionate to really advocate for our youth in bridging gaps that are still there for them and for me as a parent to my my youth and um it's a community thing yeah and, you know actually in in recovery you know we learn these lessons and we learn that you know this is a result of that you know and, yeah. and we we did a you know some self um we, we've done a lot of self-discovery and um, you know we're able to pass on that experience not just to people who are suffering right now but to our families um, you know those are things that you know as you mentioned in your childhood you, they didn't talk about this stuff right you know it was just something that happened and you know you followed that trend and ended up on that same path and now in recovery you've learned it and you know you're working towards a better tomorrow um, you know as I was saying earlier recovery is not the destination um, you know, to me, it's that entire process because as soon as we stop doing this thing, you know, we can work on something else, and um, you know, the gifts just keep coming as as we keep going. Um, so, you know, to get that experience and to share it, like I said, not only with each other but with our kids, you know, they're now getting that that experience without having to go through it. Mm. You know, um, because we do, we repeat what we know, and now you're actually offering. The opportunity for them to know recovery you know so um, you know I think it's it's pretty valuable to share this with everybody around us you know Definitely. Um, so um, what what is it you do today uh, to work in the in the recovery community I am I am I am deeply integrated with my community I um, have left previous employment and find myself um, unemployed and working towards my passion of, again, bridging the gaps, not just with the youth, with all of us. And I, um, I do volunteer work with Hope Brokers. I do you Trainings recently, and other things that I'm supposed to for peer support to keep that certification going. Yeah. And you recently just started a uh, Zoom meeting? Well. I did. I um, co-created with other parents in recovery to have a space where we can come together and share the realities that we all face and for mm -hmm. there to be low barriers in what it means for a parent. Um, and being in recovery, so it's all inclusive. Whatever yeah. your capacity is in parenting, um, so yeah, that's been a much needed um, resource. And I didn't even realize that it just wasn't really something that's there. Right. Right. And so we've been learning our lessons, yeah. um, you know, and doing what we can to make it better. 
Um, and we know from everything else that we do that sharing and, and you know getting out there to recover loud and you know sharing the experience, uh, sharing what we've learned, um, you know that's that's so valuable today. And you know we didn't have that before. Right. Um, so for us, you know, doing it today to share it and start these programs, um, you know, it was pretty helpful. So um, you know, I'm sure that program that that you're you started is going to help somebody. You know, and even if it's one family, you know, you've begun and you, you've helped that one child or those two children who are going to grow up knowing recovery, um, you know, and, and we all see the ugliness of addiction on TV, um, you know, it's in the news, it's on our streets, you know, we see it everywhere, but, you know, the, the beauty of recovery, you know, that's what we need to share um, and to give that hope to people, you know. Um, you did mention Hope Brokers. Um, you know, I am starting to partner up with uh, Marshall, and we're going to be coming out with our new show, uh, Crying Out Loud. Um, you know, that's something I'm excited about, and uh, you know, I will mention more uh, as we go along. But you know, these things that that it, it's all about ending the stigma to give people hope. And as I said earlier, when there's no hope, why are we going to bother? You know. Loving a person once they stop using drugs doesn't help the person today when they're still stuck in that struggle, you know. Um, so, you know, showing unconditional love no matter where people are at. Um, and showing them that it is worth doing the work because it's only going to get better from you. You know, when you're starting from zero, you know, it, of course there's nowhere but up to go. But if you don't think you're going to make it. Yeah, why even bother starting? Yeah. Yeah, so, if I may, on yeah. that note, there, there are plenty of programs that shame and guilt and traumatize people to do better, to recover. Uh, I'm not interested in being a part of any of that. So I would much would rather be a part of this unconditional love, and I must absolutely work on having that for myself. Absolutely. i gotta, I got to learn to like myself, to right. love myself, to then really give that. Yeah. outwardly and again it is a collective that Absolutely. that's going to be nurtured in and so yeah yeah I support that way of going about it yeah, so you know I, I do appreciate the opportunities that you're, you're putting out there for people to to learn and grow you know um, and we don't do it once we're perfect we're never gonna get perfect at it we're struggling through it um, but you know one day's experience is valuable to somebody who has zero days you know, and, um, you know, just making sure that we can get out there and spread that message and, you know, share the hope. Um, so, uh, thank you for sharing your hope in your story. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's just going to get better from here. It most definitely is. And I appreciate the space to be able to do so. Absolutely. This season of Recover Loud is presented by Recovery on the Road, a Facebook group providing recovery support and resources to anyone, anywhere, and anytime throughout the day. If you or someone you know is struggling, please connect to Recovery on the Road on Facebook. Recovery on the Road has been offering in-person meetings here at 46 Sweeten Street in Caribou. If you're in the area, please stop by, grab a calendar, and come attend one of the meetings. We believe that connection is the opposite of addiction. Recover loud, everyone. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life and recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove to people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud